So here we've got a, a Cyrus X Power, and, uh, and this is faulty, obviously. And uh, I've bought this one uh, specifically for the purpose of uh, taking a look to see what uh, upgrades we can do. You know, what can we, what improvements can we make? Uh, so let's say, uh, let's dig into this. We'll see what uh, see what's possible. So here's the input of our X Power, and we, we've seen these a bunch of times before. So there's there's nothing new here. Um, a classic uh, feedback amplifier, and uh, if we take a, a high level look at the the architecture, right. So here's a here's a very high level diagram of what's going on here. I'm not really showing any of the power stages, but this is our input section, and uh, we come in through electrolytic capacitor, uh, and uh, here's our feedback uh, coming to the other side of this uh, long tail pair here. So our feedback's coming in here, and these two resistors define our gain. And then we don't want any gain at DC, so we've got a capacitor here. Uh, so this electrolytic capacitor here is these two guys here. They're under these metal cans. Um, I guess they've, they've maybe put that there to minimise 50 hertz pickup or, or you know some other thing, I don't know. Um, but uh, that's that's these guys here. And then the uh, this one here, uh, the feedback one, is the two big... Uh, 220 micro uh, farad capacitors here. Um, so that's what's going on. And in terms of our signal path, obviously this capacitor is in the signal path, and this one indirectly, as I guess, is in the signal path via the feedback. Um, and uh, this guy here, we can't really get rid of it. Um, if we were absolutely confident we had no DC on the input, then you know, there's maybe something we can do, but realistically, yeah, not really. Um, but we, we can put a higher quality a, a part in there, you know, we can go to a nice uh, film uh, capacitor uh, and then this guy here, we can remove that if we deal with any DC offsets in other ways and uh, let's take a look at that. So what we what we do is uh, we take away that capacitor and then we, we use a, uh, this is just a DC servo here, so we use an integrator and we just, we pick up any, we pick up on the output and any any DC there is integrated and we, we drive the, we drive an error into the input uh, and uh, that just takes away any DC and uh, makes sure that, makes sure this point is always going to be driven to zero volts. It's always going to drive it to the point uh, that this op amps reference to, which is zero volts. Um, so this is the idea. Obviously a little bit more complicated, maybe a little bit more expensive on the parts and things like that. And we have to I've just have to make sure that this thing's not going to be doing anything untowards that's actually going to generate DC and, and cause us other problems. Um, but this is this is what we're going to do. Uh, and uh, so let's take a look at that. Right, here we are inside again, and we've uh, made a few modifications here. I removed these uh, these uh, input caps here with our cans. You can see the can there. Um, so they're gone, and. Uh, We've put in some nice film capacitors here. There's these red guys here, they're in place. Uh, I've left one channel just with a, a, a cap in the feedback loop, uh, and uh, just I uh, just put a smaller cap in there just for uh, what we're doing here. And then what I've done here is this is my Mono X or APA servo board, and I've just patched this in uh, just to check everything's going to be fine. And it's working working well. It's working better than I thought actually. Because um, one of the issues with these, if you do a servo, is you really need to be able to uh, disable the output um, while you're uh, powering up, while all the power supplies are settling, etc. Um, but it seems to be okay um, as is, uh, so that's fine. But obviously, uh, you know, this is not gonna, it's not gonna work as a, any kind of solution here. We need to have something that's a bit more uh, polished, um, and we need to find somewhere to mount any board that we that we put in. And what we see is that on each channel, we've got this little header here. It's a three-pin header, and it seems to this. Uh, you know, it's not for any real uh, end-user use case. It might be, it might have been intended for some Cyrus option or some kind of test purpose or whatever. But this little header gives us access to the input uh, of the the amplifier section, um, and uh, so we can we can remove the jumper there, and we'll put that jumper on our board. Uh, or, or put the short on our board and then just use these pins as our mounting method. We'll, we'll slot, a, slot a little board down on top of that. Um, 
I, I do find it quite amusing, you know, we bring our input uh, signal up and over a loop here and back down onto the board using this thing. Um, uh, whereas we were we were kind of careful to, um, you know, shield the input here, uh, shield this input cap uh, from pickup, I assume. Uh, and then we go here and do something that's going to be kind of bad for pickup in, anyway. Um, but that, uh, that's uh, what we have. Um, so anyway, we'll go and look at designing a little board to mount onto these uh, headers uh, and uh, see how that uh, see how we progress from there. All right, here's the here's the design of our little uh, servo board, and uh, you can see we've got our little header positions here and here where we're going to mate to the board, and we've got our power lines coming in, and then the uh, the sense line from the the speaker output is on either side here. Um, so that's us. Uh, you can see I've got some, just show some header pins underneath there. Um, uh, so that's us. We'll get these made up and uh, uh, see how that works when we get them installed. So sometime, sometime later then, we've got our little servo boards back here and they're, they're looking fine. I've uh, assembled a few of these now. Um, and so we'll, uh, we'll get the board out here, we'll get the main board out and we'll uh, see, uh, see just how, uh, how this uh, fits into the unit and go from there. Alright, here we are, the, the board's installed here then and it works quite well, uh, secured to those little headers there and uh, tidy enough looking as well in there. Uh, so the, the, the unit's powered up, it's obviously not completely assembled here but we've got it powered up enough to make sure that everything's alright. And uh, you know, if we look at our, look at the DC and the outputs here, we're just a few bouncing around a few millivolts there. Uh, so that's all working uh, just as we'd like. Um, so we're in good shape, I think. And the next thing we'll we'll assemble the unit completely, um, and we'll maybe look at uh, we'll look at how the the DC offset, uh, you know, what the characteristics are when you power up the unit for the first time, because uh, obviously things have got to stabilise. We're looking at a steady state here when we look at that uh, DC level there. Um, so we'll look at that. We'll look at uh, distortion, noise floors, and things like that before we before we uh, conclude on this one. Right. So our amp is uh, uh, assembled again, and uh, we've got a load connected. We've got the input terminated, and then I'm just going to measure uh, across the load on the scope here. And we're just going to look at the the DC kick that we get um, when we when we power this thing up. Uh, so let's uh, I've got a 10 second sweep on my scope here, 2 volts per division. Uh, so let's force a trigger and then we'll power up. <clears throat> and there we see we've got a you know you can see the kick up to four four ish volts there, and then the, the servo comes in and pulls the DC back down to zero. And this is this is what you usually hear as a pop or a thump when you turn a uh, particular amplifiers on. Uh, in this case the actual pulse that we see here is so slow it's kind of spread out a bit that uh, you don't you don't really hear it uh, but uh, pretty typical and uh, y you know this is kind of kind of where we expect things to be so I'm quite happy to see that waveform there. Uh, if you know if it was a huge voltage or prolonged time or, or you know whatever then we'd have some concern but uh, what we're seeing here is okay we've just got about a second and then uh, you know tails off to zero, so all good. Right, uh, let's say uh, we'll connect up to the audio analyzer now and have a wee look at the noise floor and distortion and uh, see how that goes. Right, here we are uh, looking on the audio analyzer then, and uh, got a nice, nice quiet noise floor here. We're doing about minus one twenty. Um, we're used to seeing some of the other amps up about the hundred and ten, um, so we're we're a good bit better in in that respect. And uh, you know we can see some of the some of the 50 hertz harmonics uh, uh, creeping through there just because that noise floor is lower, um, so it, it maybe looks a bit uh, unattractive there. And of course it would be nice if that wasn't there, but uh, uh, it's just the fact that this noise floor is normally normally this stuff would be buried under under that. Uh, so this is pretty good. Um, let's go and have a look at the distortion now. Looking at the distortion then, there's really, really good numbers here, triple knots, uh, triple knot nine, um, uh, so very, very low percentages here, and if we look at this in dB, 
we're uh, you know we're just on the sort of hundred db there, so uh, you know almost textbook kind of numbers for this kind of amp, uh, these kind of numbers. So quite happy with that. Uh, let's uh, just we'll wrap up these measurements. We're going to have a quick look at the frequency response. And here's the here's the frequency response here. So very very flat uh, all the way up, and uh, you know we're down a, a three dB down uh, about hundred kilohertz. So we're talking about hundred kilohertz bandwidth, which uh, is within spec and pretty respectable. So uh, again, no issues here. Um, so we're all happy with these uh, uh, measurements here, and uh, I think you know we're ready ready to wrap this up. We'll just have a quick listen and uh, see how that goes. All right, here we are with our X Power all back together then, and uh, got our you know our upgraded caps in there and our little servo board, uh, and it, so it's sounding nice. I've been doing a doing a bunch of listening here, and I mean obviously these things are subjective. I'm not gonna you know go on about how uh, this bit sounds better or uh, that kind of thing, you know. But uh, I've obviously heard a lot of these X Powers, and, and to my ears it just kind of pushes things in the right direction. So I'm. I'm happy, happy that that's the case, and it's uh, you know something worth doing. Um, so that's us. Let's uh, just have a listen, and we'll wrap up at that. <laughs> 